Good morning um, and welcome to this course cyber security and privacy. Um, I want to welcome you and uh, I thank you for signing in for the course cyber security and privacy. Uh, today is the day of introduction and uh, therefore, uh, we will be breaking the ice and also get to know what the course uh, would contain uh, in terms of content. So, what I would deliver uh, from this course and what I expect you to do as part of this course or the course work. Um, these are the two main things that we will discuss, but I will also um, try to motivate you uh, about the topic. Uh, so, that is very important uh, when we start. Um, is this topic important? Is cyber security an important topic? And uh, should it really bother or it should it um, really be a matter of concern for practicing managers? Irrespective of what you manage, should managers be concerned about cyber security? Okay? And if so, why? Um, that is something that we would uh, try to address in the first session so that you have a clarity of why one should uh, credit a course or why one should actually spend so much time going through uh, a six credit course to do uh, to understand cyber security and privacy. Okay. Um, yeah, so the title is cyber security and privacy. Um, I just want to know what is your understanding about cyber security. So, you can just talk about um, what do you mean when you hear this term cyber security. There are two terms cyber security and privacy. So, it is a it is an ant there. So, feel free to talk about it um, at is, as to what is your understanding. So, cyber security is more about you know vulnerability management of the computers and the network system. So, that the data whatever is there that gets protected. Okay, good. So, you have three key words. One is um, uh, data, other is about vulnerability, third is about unauthorized access. Okay. So, these are um, certain key terms that is associated with um, cyber security. Anything else? Any other thoughts on cyber security? Okay. Uh, what do you think about privacy? That is the second term. See, the title is actually consisting of two key terms, cyber security and privacy. Okay, good. So, you talked about two things. One is um, privacy is about me and my data, uh, which I choose to disclose, I choose not to disclose. And the other is uh, the security layer, which um, exist uh, at some level, uh, some system level. All right. So, there are two things cyber security and privacy and the, the interface or the intersection between the two uh, is also important. Okay. So, how is cyber security and privacy related? So, that is another aspect uh, of the course. Okay. Um, let me actually give you some more background information uh, as we go to get a motivation um, to understand is cyber security and privacy uh, a current topic, is it an important topic and is it relevant to managers. Okay. So, here is an email I received some time back from the director of IIT Madras and um, when you receive an email in your official email uh, box. Um, and it is from the top boss, you pay attention to it. right? So, uh, his name is written and it is a request and there is content of course, to uh, meet him uh, and uh, of course, it ends well, best regards, name and designation. right? So, um, so, so, what should I do to this email? Uh, and I know 
professor ramamurthy he does contact people when he wants to give some specific roles or administrative roles particularly he um, he did have this habit of calling up people or writing personal emails and um, doing like this so this is this is an instance of that kind so what what should be my response I should check the email ID. The sender email ID. Why should I do that? Because you know we don't check the sender ID when you get an email from your colleague or from your area head or department head. We we just have a lot of communications going on. Can be okay. So email is spoofing. I know how. Why should I doubt this mail? Sir, so, there is no need to be suspicious according to me because it does not de demand anything uh, like uh, sensitive information from you. It is just asking you to drop an email. Yeah. Uh, but I must tell you, I did check uh, who sent this mail. I got suspicious. Can you imagine what is the source of suspicion? Uh, this is uh, well that that's okay no, that's okay yeah yeah uh, it's an internal mail so this is fine the signature part is fine the address everything is fine ah uh, okay it looks in uh, informal uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. There is a slight change in the pattern. This is written like a very personal mail. You know, uh, there can be some personal element when people write to you uh, professionally, but more than so. But it's very personal. Can I have a quick? That is also fine. Moment, please. Okay, so. This does not sound professional as uh, you uh, sensed, I also sense, you know, I do not expect him to say, can I have a quick moment with you, right. So, I became suspicious at that particular content, so, this cannot be from the director, okay, or this may not be from the director because this is not, the, this is not the choice of words when you typically write to uh, a colleague or a, a in a professional setting. So, and then of course, as you suggested, I decide who is sending this uh, email. Of course, that is the first check uh, all of us can do when we have a doubt. Okay? Um, and uh, I found this email uh, coming from a Gmail, not from the IITM domain. And therefore, um, this is obviously um, suspicious and uh, we call this kind of mails as phishing mails we typically call it phishing mails but it is not just a phishing mail phishing mail all of us get every day in fact a lot of junk mail comes asking for our bank uh, uh, bank details or other kinds of uh, personal information uh, we know that this is uh, obviously phishing mail but here it takes time to resolve this because it's a colleague or it's a director and uh, his address is given at the end and the sender also knows that well i am a faculty member of iit madras and professor Raska, uh, bhaskar ramamurthy is the director of course the uh, former director so someone knows who is who in an organization okay somebody has actually collected background information okay we call it typically social engineering okay so this is this is social engineering based phishing mails where um, the chance of one responding to this is much higher okay so not just a phishing mail someone from africa writing i have a lot of funds to transfer why don't you share your um, bank uh, account details we obviously know i don't have i don't know anyone out there but this is from a non circle uh, based on social engineering and this is um, this is called spear phishing okay spear phishing is very specific based on 
social engineering where people uh, or the hacker or the hands behind this have done um, background study. Okay. Um, so, then subsequently of course, um, Professor Ra uh, Ramamurthy sent a follow up mail to all the colleagues because he knew that uh, this uh, phishing mail was circulating in the institute. Okay. Um, so, th this is some time back and this is very recent. Okay. So, a couple of weeks back the head of our department wrote again a similar mail, uh, can you do something for me. Right. And here again you see the uh, professor, you know the proper title of the faculty member, the name and uh, the signature you say it is full signature. So, you usually tend to reply uh, immediately. Okay. So, uh, what I essentially want to say here is that um, we face this kind of um, problems or this kind of threats uh, in the world of internet in the world of so called cyber world uh, often and it is all part of our experience or it has become part of our day to day experience. Um, what I am trying to do is to sample to sample um, some instances which uh, I came across either individually or from newspapers and to give you a sense of what is going on in the environment in the current times. Okay. This is um, a text message I received you know um, uh, in fact two weeks back and um, the text message um, uh, asked me to um, do, do a verification of my PAN card okay. and it gives a link to the SBI side and uh, I am sure all of you have most of us have our account in the State Bank of India. Okay. And uh, of course, um, since this is uh, a request from a bank, you tend to respond to it. right? And uh, it led me to this uh, site, you know, SBI and this login page looks exactly the same, Okay, the bank logo um, and whatever fields you generally fill in in the same font um, in the same format is given and then you have to enter the captcha code. And uh, looks like I should be entering this data and signing in to do whatever formality is required to keep my account uh, on. But uh, is there a problem here? I think uh, by now all of us or most of us are familiar. So, when you get a message to sign in somewhere, you go and the first thing that you look is what is the, uh, what is the uh, website? Is it giving the right address or it is giving a? Um, fake address. In this case, we know that this is not um, SBI um, website from where we sign in. It is uh, online uh, SBI, but it is something else. So, as soon as even um, when I sign into a bank account regular on a regular basis, I of course check the uh, address because sometimes a wrong address may pop in and we may be signing in and the signing in data including your username, password may be going elsewhere. So, um, yeah, let me continue this. So, we, we, I, I just show you some things I faced as an individual, okay, as an individual or of course, um, this uh, phishing mail is something that went to everyone. So, as a group or as an organization, we uh, do come across instances of um, cyber security or cyber security related issues. And uh, these are clips from uh, leading newspapers of India, where it recently reported increasing number of cyber attacks. Okay. And uh, the last piece is about ransomware attacks. Have you heard of ransomware attacks? Oh, okay. Uh, but denial of service attack is different from ransomware. We, we will be we will be discussing a case on denial of service. But ransomware is um, is another kind of um, security threat where the one who attacks, so the hacker, takes control of your machine and uh, encrypts. In fact, encrypts your machine and uh, ask you for money to release it. It is like when uh, you lock your house and uh, go away and when you come back you find that your house is there is another layer uh, of a lock on 
your house and you can't enter the house because somebody else is locked and uh, and the hacker is quite fair well i will give you the key to enter but give me some money okay and let's not make let, let's not make it complicated just give me some money the key is with me take the money take the key unlock and go in okay so uh, it's ransom you know the word ransom is about you know it, it's about paying to release someone okay so um, ransom redemption etc related words so you have to pay a ransom to release your machine from someone else's control okay ransomware in fact ransomware is one of the most um, frequent attacks okay in terms of threat intelligence in today's world ransomware has become very common and uh, this is something about which uh, the world as a whole is concerned about okay um, here is a report um, again from newspapers um, as I said this is another sample um, which happened uh, predominantly in the uh, western world where um, the POS machines you know the POS machines are typically in a retail store when you buy something and when you check out there is a POS you know point of sale machine where you actually uh, do the checkout process and make the payment and then um, take your items and come out but if if suppose in a very busy day um, on a retail store if the pos machine stops working okay then you know the kind of uh, chaos and also um, you know the the operations just stop there because uh, companies which are automated they won't have a manual process to continue business okay so your your shops just closed down and this is this did happen in um, 2021 when um, retail stores which used um, the POS software uh, built by Kaseya. Okay, Kaseya is an IT company which provided POS solutions and uh, several retail stores in the west stopped because there was a ransomware attack. You, you see what is the ransomware attack? Um, the hacker just want 70 million dollars to restore the machine and uh, the uh, most of the times the hacker is very uh, is a good thief you know you call it good thieves you pay the money and it's done you know the machine is released but if you don't pay the money it's uh, it's very very difficult okay to become operational and generally in my reading i found that companies just pay the money and restart the business okay uh, the only exception i came across uh, uh, is uh, in chennai okay so chennai corporation species were attacked uh, by hackers and it was a ransomware attack okay and the chennai corporation refused to pay the money okay because they found that their machines were very outdated okay so they were running on windows 8 and it's very um, easy to take control of machines which are not updated with the operating systems and uh, they said okay let it be locked forever so they didn't pay but uh, for um, critical business operations when ransomware attack happened okay so it's huge loss okay so per hour loss will be very huge as compared to the ransom that the hacker is asking for okay so and that has become a serious nuisance um, in today's world and here's more reports so i'm not exactly following a, a chronological order in actually presenting to you the different cyber um, attacks that happened in the recent times but this is november december uh, 2022 you must have read this in newspapers about all india institute of medical sciences um, so five servers were hacked by the um, cyber criminals and they took control and you know the biggest concern when a hospital's uh, data center gets uh, comes under attack okay the, this is a different type of data this is healthcare data okay and someone takes control or someone gets access you know you, you said unauthorized access okay somebody gets unauthorized access to uh, my personal health data okay um, in india we may not be so concerned about health data 
but health data when it goes into the wrong hands has huge implications. Can you imagine why? Um, so much so that um, in the US there is a act called HIPAA. Okay? So, that relates to healthcare, it is a regulation for healthcare data alone. Why is the world so concerned about uh, healthcare data protection? Can you, uh, can you just imagine and give me some quick answers once you have a health condition. So, health uh, care data is uh, super sensitive uh, because the, the person whose health data um, is um, leaked, the, the person actually faces huge embarrassment okay? and uh, it, the person also can face losses. Uh, in an organization or it may have higher consequence and that is why the top um, hospital of the country when their servers were uh, attacked or came under cyber threat it became a huge concern huge national concern okay. so so we see we, we see cyber attack happening in all spheres you know all domains it's not just we just saw Kirloskar you know, it is a manufacturing company, we saw AIMS, healthcare, these are all very uh, recent uh, news. So, he just uh, opened the newspaper, everyday newspaper, this is what I see. There is some piece of information or some something that is covered about cyber security almost every day. Okay? So, we all talk about digital world, digitization, digital India and so on. So, you see a very bright side of how digital technologies are actually enabling the growth of the economy or enabling the country to actually progress, be in the line of progress. We also see alongside a dark side, there is a bright side, very bright side of digital uh, and there is also a dark side or the dark world that develops alongside and that is um, the concern of cyber security. Okay? So, the world consists of um, good people and bad people. Okay? So, there are bad people in the world. Uh, who understands the weaknesses uh, or um, as you use the word vulnerabilities okay, and can exploit those vulner vulnerabilities very, very well and um, damage, cause damage and losses. Okay, the impact of such actions can be very high okay. uh, to the extent that the recent um, I think this is ENY report which is summarized in a newspaper which shows 91% uh, of the organizations uh, reported at least one instance of cyber incidents in an year, okay? at least one incident. So, think about that 91% of organizations do actually face at least one incident an year okay? and it goes on to report uh, how cyber security is becoming a top priority for CEOs or leaders of the organizations. Okay. Um, so, this is the, the this piece is of uh, grave concern to me. Okay. So, you, you know the changes that is happening in transportation. 